Okay. Uh, good morning, class. Uh, yes. Do you have any question? Yeah, no. From yesterday's class, any question? Yes. Okay. Okay, doctor. Hmm? Okay, come on. As you are seeing... Uh, Andrew, please mute your mic. Andrew? Okay. Okay, come on. Okay, as we have seen last session, we have this case about uh, the two approach we have seen, uh, rule-based and statical approach. But uh, one thing is that, uh, as we have seen, the, an example of uh, this is a course change it into uh, uh, archive yes so this is uh, as i think discourse or uh, no. uh, ambiguity no as I think. Uh, it's not discourse uh, gamacho okay. uh, it's also statistical which means uh, by the time that test was done the google model had a highest probability of associating archaic with course. But when it has, you know, when it collects more data, maybe that statistical value has decreased. And in the state, the later course was selected. And later on, core chambelot na barando mandig zete sesarago. Course milon, core chahulubulot na bara. It is just a statistical. Mind you, what it does is it tries to count how many times these phrases co-occur in the English and in the Amharic sentence. Okay, so let's see. Discourse high Sarab. Okay. It doesn't doctor, do any discourse. It is just a statistical. Okay. Is it good enough, to, doctor? If in, instead of this, uh, the if you use deep learning for uh, this statically is good enough. Yeah. Statically is good enough for this. Uh, as think. This you is have, as human. You have to experiment. <laughs> Nothing is good enough as a human translator. But as a researcher, uh, I cannot give you an answer that this is good enough. You have to do a research to make to make this uh, decision or to make a, a conclusion on how good enough a model is. Because uh, uh, there are some things that Google already explained how the translator works, but they don't give you every detail. Internally, they you know, they, we know that they use many other algorithms internally, but they don't expose all those things because it's a product by itself. And they are not going to share with you each and every algorithm, but at least they tell us you know, the basic thing. So if you go to the Google Translate website, they tell you how they do it. At least they tell you the basic things. But we cannot judge this is better or this is not better without doing an experiment, uh, okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, Did you get my point, Gamachu? Yes. Okay. Any other question? Go to Google Translate page and try to understand how the translation model is built. Okay? Mind you, as, as a graduate student, as a researcher, you have to read a lot. There is no easy answer for everything, especially in machine learning, there is no simple answer. The answer is for you to do an experiment on it, okay? Any other question? Okay, if not, let's move to uh, today's topic, which would be the last topic to, to deliberate, I mean, to uh, offer online. So what we are going to do, see today is uh, how uh, a statistical machine translation work. And in here, the basic thing that we have in a statistical machine translation is what we call word alignment. And what it means is, whenever you give it a bytext, if you remember last time we had an example, Adela, 
we had such kind of such kind of uh, an example mumbla nebera liju yene now blends often and the equivalent english sentences the boy is mine no adala menelo now this is a parallel sentence now what we call an alignment is a statistical model that tries to relate two things it is going to create a kind of you know if you visualize it it's going to create uh, a link between an amharic and an english word or phrase ehinna no misara and for this it's going to calculate uh, probabilities or statistics it's going to calculate probability of occurrence for instance what it is going to do is something like this okay uh, let's say it has the word leju okay then it's going to try to see sorry so it's going to try to see how leju would be uh, co-occurring with the boy and it's going to also do the other uh, probability okay leju was Uh, is mine for example it's going to change this one or you know evaluate this one or it will say uh, the word no with a boy and again the word no with is with all possibilities malatin so what you're going to do is calculate the probability of occurrence of the co-occurrence of this uh, statistically mind you every combination should be checked it means word to word phrase to phrase word to phrase phrase to word matter because the alignment can can be one to one which means one word from the target to one word to the source um, to, to the uh, source uh, it can be one to many which means one word from the source to two words or more in the target or it can be many to one which means many words or a phrase in the source with a single word in the target or it can also be uh, many to many so you have to create every possible combination malati every possible combination matter alabat then try to see which one is a maximum and to do this as we have said earlier you need to have many such kind of by takers ya uzila as you can see the sentence is the same but the idea is you need to have different sentence having you know a by takers malati and this different sentence would give you the statistics that you need to make a decision la misale min ilachwal maybe this is equal to uh, 0.56 uh, no ilachwal ihenyaw gen 0.01 no ilachwal so what does it mean because this is co-occurrence i don't know liju milbet yallebet bota lay bemulu is mine mil kal meta what does it mean the probability is going to you know qas yale yeqana say meta but whenever the amharic text contains liju if the english contains the boy then you know that the probability or the frequency is going to increase so lazi men nalalen kazi bohala if you find liju then you can write you know correctly say that it is a boy the translation is a boy len len chalalen so what does it mean without having a dictionary without having a dictionary we are trying to build a dictionary using uh, a word alignment using the by text so what we call uh, what we call a word alignment is a statistical machine translation and uh, Uh, giza plus plus or the recent one which is m giza is a statistical uh, machin translation word alignment so it's a statistical machin translation toolkit which is used to train you see we can use it to train a word alignment an alignment means uh, creating an equivalence between a word in the source language with a word or a phrase in the target language and for this we need language pairs that's what we call is a a uh, bytech store a parallel corpus so it uses different algorithms and different approach for you know bootstrapping the alignment so for example this is a simple uh, a simple case lemisale hulatun qanqawoch binay the word did not in amharic ayachut it's a two phrase or a two word phrase no but it is associated with a single word in the target language the single word in english which is a slap is represented by as you can see three words in the target language because this is the one that shows you the alignment tilik probability is in order then it means they are aligned to one another which means is whenever the sentence i mean the phrase did not appear in english 
then this word appear in the target language malati. As you can see, the word is associated with la. As you can see, the word green is associated with verd. And the word which, I mean, which is associated with bruja kamiloga associated. What does it mean? Whenever you have the word which in, in English, that target language has bruja So what does it mean? There are sentences which do not have green, which do not have slap, which do not have did not, which do not have neri, but having uh, which, which is also associated with burja in the target language. And this is what we call is word alignment. Mind you, word alignment in a way will create a, bi, uh, a bilingual dictionary model. Definitions I want to miss at You can use it to create a bilingual dictionary, which means if you don't have a dictionary of the language and, but if you have a huge amount of by takers, literally you can build a word, I mean, uh, you can build a bilingual dictionary, which means a translation from one language to, uh, to the other, either at a word or uh, at a phrase level, which is a very good uh, experiment. So this is, this is what's going to, I mean, this is what happens in uh, word alignment. Given a sentence in a foreign language F, find, uh, just a moment, uh, can I, yeah, yeah. This is what we have. Given a sentence in a foreign language, let's call it F, what we want to do is we want to find the most appropriate translation in English or in the target language. So in a way, we are trying to have a probabilistic model. And what does that probabilistic model try to do? It's going to try to calculate the probability of, for example, if it is from Amharic to English, I mean, from English to Amharic, then what is the probability of having an Amharic sentence given the English sentence? This is what we do. So if it is at a word level, then what is the probability of, let's say, and Amarinya and or the English word is, let's say, uh, chair, okay? Chair non -well. What is the probability that the English word chair is translated as? And as you see, what's the probability that? Uh, mind you, this is a conditional probability, which means what is the probability that the word is one bear given that the English equivalent is or the English term is chair. And if it is ambiguous, then we have another one. So this is what we are trying to answer. Okay. What is the probability? So you have to choose one of the two, which will help you to do some baguette mallet. Okay. And this conditional probability, you know that using the base theorem, probability of A given B catabala, what does it mean? And then I'll calculate them another How do you calculate this one? It means probability of, sorry, A, B divided by probability of B, no, using the base method. What if, if you have probability of B given A? Because if it is a bilingual translation, you can do one from the other. It is again probability of AB divided by probability of B nominal. Now what we can do is let's take out probability of AB and now those again. So probability of AB is equivalent to uh, probability of B given A, I don't know, multiplied by probability of B. Does that allow me to go? Using crisscross, it means over Salone, So probability of A B is it going to be probability of B given A multiplied by probability of B on R. So it means we can put it in here. So using the base method again, probability of A given B mallet is going to be instead of A B is going to be this one divided by probability of B on Alma, as you can see here. But probability of B is common, a common denominator for all of them. So let's say because we, are, we want to take the maximum, right? So if you have a common uh, denominator, then you don't need it if the denominator is the same for all. So in this case, if you are asking the probability of, let's say, an Amharic uh, sentence given the English, it is, sorry, yeah, then it is equivalent to 
probability of the English given the Amharic multiplied by probability of the English Malatno, the English language or the English sentence. So sometimes you can make it bi-directional by looking into, into or I mean, by using the base term. So as you can see in here, as you can see in here, what we have is uh, we want to take the maximum score. You see, we want to take the maximum, which means we are, we are interested about the argument, which is going to give us the maximum conditional probability. So we call this one a translation model in Neuralem because it tries to translate into a foreign language given the English language. In this case, we can say translated to Amharic given the English language, Malatno. And probability of E is what we call uh, the language model for the English language. A language model, uh, we will see it, we have a chapter on this one, but what we call a language model is a model that uh, generates uh, possible sequence of words in a language or which is used to validate the correctness of as of a, a sentence a sentence in a language okay so we can use a language model uh, for these two purposes the first one is a language model can be used to generate possible sequence of words in the language you know, a possible sequence in a language means in a sentence, Malatno. The other one is it's also used to validate whether, whenever you are given a sentence, it is used to validate whether that sentence is correct or not. So after the translation, we have to evaluate whether the translated or the generated sentence is correct. So by combining these two, you see, by combining the conditional probability of a translation, as well as the validity or the correctness of that sequence of sentence, we can actually perform a statistical machine translation. So this is the idea that we have in a Ferris-based machine translation. Using uh, either uh, Giza++ or any word alignment, what you can do is if you are given a sentence in two languages, you can create an alignment or an association between a phrase or a word from one language to the other. For example, as you can see in here, Morgan is associated with the English term uh, tomorrow, this is a German uh, sentence. And uh, Naj Canada is related or associated with in Canada to the conferences associated with their conference. And Fleege is associated with Fly. I know that I'm not pronouncing the, the German sentence, I mean, words and phrases correctly. But uh, the pronunciation doesn't matter in here because it's a string manipulation. So the foreign inputs must be segmented into phrases because you know that it, uh, it, it can also associate a single word with many words or phrases. So each phrase, you see, each phrase is probabilistically translated to English, okay? Because there are any other possibilities. For example, uh, the, the word or the phrase in Canada can be associated with this one or with this one or with this one, with all the others. Kaulunga associate Maragin because that's a probability. I don't know, chance I don't know now. But from these, only one of them was, would have the highest score. And we are interested about identifying the one with the highest score. Let me say, in Canada, Milo, each Camilo ga, Munehal Gize ko Karagua. Mind you, if you have a huge data, Buzugize Abro Oker Kala de Rego, what does it mean? It's not a possible translation, Mallet. But in Canada, Milo, full Gize. Uh, what does it mean? You can certainly say that Nash Canada is a translation or can be aligned with the English term in Canada. So let's take only one, one example in here. Okay. Let's take one example in here. So as you can see, uh, if you see the English, I mean the French, their conference in here, uh, what we know is from the language, from the parallel corpus, it occurred with to the conference or with into the meeting. So what does it mean? This German phrase has two possibilities, Malet. It can occur with in the parallel corpus with the phrase to the conference or into the meeting. Now the question that you know I need to ask is which one is the largest value? Kaula two yet in your probability, This is a question. 
Okay. Now let me give you the, the Amharic example in here. Minna ber masala chow ande gize the tamariyoch dekna anten da sarachut Google lai Google Translate lai. I ask them to attempt any uh, you know interesting translation. By the way, most of the translation that you have posted, I didn't find them interesting. Let's you know report ya lada raput. But let me give you this one. Okay, let me give you this one. It was a good translation. Minna ber milo amarinyo. Yamogas, Lich, Mendena Bermilo, well, let us mess selling at her. Emil, a mountain satut, a marina sentence satutana, translates Yarago, and does the other. And as you know, translate Yarago. You see, Yamogas Lijuan Ladesh Sibal, Grace's daughter gave birth to translate Yarago. So let's even mind it. In the parallel corpus, when Ladechina gave birth, co Karadagoa, Lijina daughter, co Karagoa. But mind you, Mogas and Milon, it translated into Grace. And Yaman Falagogan Dayton of birth. And as you know, Paradal. This is what we were expecting. But one thing happened. From the corpus, the word grace and the word itself, Mogas, the name. Mogas is the name of a person, right? Was confusing for Google. So let's see, the thing is, it calculated this probability. Let's see, Mogas is a probability that the word Yamogas is a probability that the word Yamogas is a probability that the word Yamogas in the parallel corpus occurred with Mogas's Mind you, English and Yola Hinoro, Amari Yola Hiala Betana, English and Yola Hinoro, Amari Yola Hiala Betan, Count Yaraga. Which one is the highest? So, what it shows is Grace's color, Ihenya was found to be having a higher score than this. Ihenya Zikala, no other than That's why Google selected Grace rather than the term Mogus. And that's what we call it a statistical machine translation. From the by takers, it tries into, you know, look into the co-occurrence and based on the co-occurrence, it calculates a conditional probability. Once it has a conditional probability, whenever that phrase is found in the input takers, then it will make a decision based on the probability score. So this is a state of the art that we have in Martian translation, which is a statistic based translation. So some of the examples of an alignment, Lamasale, Greenhouse, uh, Casa Verde, Yellow one. The house of Milan, like uh, like as So it's a translation uh, that we have. So what it does is it calculates the probability. Let me say, any word could mean you know any word, literally. So now any mean can mean anything. Let me say, it has translation binora. Mind you, this is a parallel corpus of Lenin Nasser, or these are the two parallel corpus that we have. So let's have uh, some uh, some description. Let's even learn now. Probability you mean now? The word green. Sorry. Green can mean casa, lihonichela. The word green eh, can also mean uh, verde, lihonichela. The word house can mean casa. Okay. The word house again can mean uh, verde, lihonichela. Okay. Who let the new license with us? Zanyo Garamusun Meta. The can be la, the can be case, casa, sorry. The only chela, house can be la, then house can be casa. Sorry, hey, casa no, eh, no. Okay, and does he leon each la? Okay, now have a look at for a commonality. Mun common nagarala, Nizila. Mun commonality, Allah. What do you see? What do you see, uh, Yeshuas? 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 Uh, yes, yes Yeshuas? Huh? House. Slazi Mendioni House, Casa. House Milo, Kakasaga, 
ምክንያቱም ሁለቱም ጋር ኦከር አርጓል እዚህ ጋር ብሏል እዚህ ጋር ብሏል አይደል? ኤስ ስለዚህ ምን ይነግረናል? ሜቢ ይሄ አይደለም ማለት ነው። ኦኬ? ይሄም አይደለም ማለት ነው። ይሄም አይደለም ማለት ነው። ሌላ ምን አለን? የቀሩ ዝም ብለን የቀሩትም እንደናይ ላ ከማጋ አለ ዘ ከላጋ አለ ካሳ ደሞ ሃውስ ከሆነ ምን ማለት ነው? ግሪን ደሞ እ በርዴ ሊዮን ይችላል ማለት ነው so anything can be anything እና ማለት ነው እዚህ ላይ but whenever you have more data you can actually come up with a statistics ለምሳሌ እዚህ ላይ ሰጠነው statistics ምን እንደሆነ the probability of you know having the word house as uh, it, i mean the uh, the word is la given the word is house min chance min hone it is 1 over 3 based on the association gen kalaga and gize no kare yaderego yalen you can actually create uh, such kind of a link between between the two language so we know that word alignment is very important to see such kind of relationship so the probabilities is you can see the probability between uh, multiple languages by looking into the statistics ayachu the probability that the word uh, green is casa uh, the word house is verde green verde mohonuna house demo casa yemohonu calculate naragalen you see for each of them you can calculate the probability the probability is that the isla house is casa the is casa and house is casa yeyandannu calculate naragena you can actually see the alignment between between the same things but to create the whole model you need to have many parallel corpus having this uh, this statistics now whenever you develop a machine learning uh, i mean a machine translation approach there are very practical issues that you need to consider the first one is resource availability like do you have the resource to develop a machine learning uh, i mean a machine learning approach for machine translation uh, like do you have a parser and a generator because a parser is a one that actually converts the word order of the source into the word order of the target language so you need to have a parser uh, to understand the sentence of the source language and you need to have a generator to produce the word order of the target language the other one is do you have a translation lexicon mind you a translation lexicon is a one that you have at the existing level to zilla tron in a machine translation pyramid the one that we have in the bottom is uh, the gisting which is translating the source word into the target word so you can have a word based lexicon translation or you can use a transfer or interlingual or you can use even uh, a word alignment for this purpose but on top of that the most important resource that we need in machine translation is what we call parallel corpus or the bytext some of them can be domain specific some of them would be bigger so the idea is if you have more data then it gives you more chance to understand uh, the language the other major requirement that we have is to build the resources like to build a word alignment to build a parallel corpus to clean the parallel corpus all these things need a time in addition to that the statistical model need a training time so these are some of the resources that are required which is uh, a consideration that you have to make in here the other machine translation uh, model that we have is what we call moses moses is an open source machine translation system it is developed in c++ but uh, there is also a version in other uh, modern programming language what it does is from the bytext or from the language pair it automatically trains a translation model mind you when we say translation model what it does is it tries to build the word alignment between the two using a statistical approach so the requirement is it needs a parallel corpus and as we said earlier it is a phrase based mind you if you fixate it to only a word based then the translation coverage is going to be really weak so for this purpose that's why we say a phrase based statistical approach is uh, the state of the art the other type of machine translation that we have is example based machine translation which is very interesting and it is established to tackle the challenge that we had in a rule based machine translation and the whole idea in an example based machine translation maybe from your machine translation course i mean from your machine learning course you remember the k nearest neighborhood right k nearest neighborhood what it does is 
it will compare the inputs with all the data elements and it tries to identify k data points that are very close to the input uh, data set. Then it will take a majority vote to decide the class of the new data or the new uh, instance. So that's what we call is uh, learning by an, an analogy or making a decision by analogy. So in an example based machine translation, what it does is all the translation by text would be stored in the database. Okay, all translation. Like if you have fifty thousand sentence or by text, all the fifty thousand by text would be stored in the database. Now, the moment you have an input sentence, the moment you have an input sentence for the translation, what the example based machine translation does is that input sentence will be searched in the whole database. What if that exact sentence is already part of your database? It means you know the, the translation model, model. That's what we call is translation by example or analogy based translation. And it will directly give you, what if the whole sentence is not found? Maybe some part of it would be found. Lem Saleh, sentence two, existing translation contains a mil chim part of which I'm going to search it in the database. Yes, soon segment is your medal, no So that's what we call is translation by analogy or by example. So the idea of translating by analogy, translate by adopting the previously seen examples, you see, rather than by developing a linguistic or a probabilistic rule. So sometimes they call it case-based reasoning militar. So this is how it works. In example-based machine translation, it requires a database of translation here. Kul gizyabrono minoro So mind you in a statistical machine translation, once you build the model, then you don't need the data because the probability model contains every word and every phrase in the by text. But in an example-based machine translation, the whole data should be available you know, throughout the time. So what it does is it matches the inputs against the example in the database. Inputs on Sato, it matches it with the example in the database. That's why we call it, it's a translation memory. So every translation, which is you know, stored as a by text, is a translation memory model. And if the whole sentence is not found, then it tries to find the fragment or align it with a fragment, then finally recombine it. So this is how it works as an example. If the input sentence that I have for you is he buys a book on international politics, then what it does is it looks for the whole sentence in the database. What does it mean? The translation is perfect. It's going to look for a segment of it. In the by takers, this is found. He buys a notebook in again. So at least some part of it is already here. He buys a milon again total mallet. So what it does is he buys a milon, let's check extract that. Then there is another example in the database which says I read a book on international politics. A book in international politics is the segment that is found. Yesun translation, the Moyo style, you see? This is a book in international politics. And what it does is it tries to combine the segments. He buys a Miloni is a book in international politics. Amatana is going to try to combine as a whole sentence. But mind you, the first attempt is to try to find the whole sentence as one manat. Kala genyodomo, it's going to look for a part of it or a segment of it, then it will go through the process of recombining. So if you compare, an example-based machine translation with a statistical machine translation, this is how it is done. We have three basic parameters, but these three parameters are very important. In a statistical machine translation, the statistical data or parameters or probabilities will be calculated from the by text. You see, from the parallel corpus, you calculate a probability score, then you don't need the, the by text model. But in example-based machine translation, since the input is always compared with the database, it uses the by takers as a primary data source. Because it tries to do string matching. Okay. The other property is in statistical machine uh, translation, pre-processing is very essential, which means maybe stemming part of speech tagging of Linsarangelalan to calculate additional probabilities. Uh, removing noises, and so on. And so pre-processing is a must, but in example-based machine translation, since we do a string matching, it is an optional process. The last parameter is in a statistical machine translation, mind you, in a statistical machine translation, even if the input sentence, the test sentence, 
was part of the initial uh, bitext or parallel corpus, the result that you get is not exactly its translation in the bitext. Lemon, probability is lona, probability varily are But in example based machine translation, you see, in example based machine translation, if the input is part of the example set, you see, if the input text is already part of the bitext database, you are guaranteed to get the same translation result. It's memory based. But in a statistical machine translation, phrase which no combine the whole sentence out of And that phrase combination might make some alteration or variation. So these are the three basic important variations or differences between statistical machine translation and example-based machine translation. Uh, after the break, we'll see some examples in Google Translate. Okay.